what we're going to do today is we're going to mount the quick detach for the Predator Tactics Deadeye tripod system. Um, this avoids you uh, from having to use a, a grip that would, or a saddle that would normally clamp it. What this will do is it'll be putting a rail. You can use a weaver or a Picatinny style, and you'll just permanently put that on there, fix it with two screws, and then mount the quick detach that comes with the tripod system. Um, what we've chosen to do today on this wood stock, <clears throat> I'll try to find a link for y'all because it's been about a year since I bought these, but we're going to use a quarter 20. Got a quick thread on the outside. It's got a nice deep bite. Flathead cranks it in, and that's a quarter 20 uh, thread inside. Then what we've done is we bought some stainless screws quarter 20 with the tapered head and we'll be uh, countersinking them into our rail and what we found that we like the best and it fits the length and the holes are pre-drilled was this uh, weaver it was 10 bucks Bass Pro it's a Remington 870 mount and I already have it fixed in the vise over here but I'll pull it out of there and show you all why we decided to go with it this is a piece that comes with the Predator Tactics. The two screw holes that are already there, when we cut this off right here, it's gonna be perfect. These grooves line up perfectly and uh, it's gonna give us enough for two guns. 10 bucks, can't beat it. We're gonna step up the size of the hole and uh, we got all our hardware at uh, Ace Hardware. I'm sure everybody's got that. And then we're using a, a half inch uh, countersink to put the taper in to set our screw down so it don't interfere. Um, then for our plastic guns, I would call it plastic stock, composite stock, um, we're gonna just do a helicoil. And all this stuff we're gonna go ahead and lock tight in. It's quarter 20 helicoil. And uh, we'll just show y'all our way of doing it and y'all can take it how you want and uh, hopefully it helps you out getting yours set up but uh, it's just gonna make it a lot nicer. We're gonna put them on every gun, that way we can just jump from gun to gun. And uh, we're gonna cut it right here in the center of them two, and then we'll flush it down and touch it up with a black permanent marker and you'll never be able to see it. So. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the sander out and I'm just gonna flush that down to that rail edge there, take off that extra material. And like I said, we're gonna touch it up with a black permanent marker. I've done it before, it works pretty good. Uh, we'll show you the what it looks like here when we're done in one second. Yeah, so basically guys, when you get the dead eye tripod system from Predator Tactics, it comes with this mount here. Now what this mount does is it mounts to the tripod like so. So the, we're just modifying something to be on the gun permanently so that whenever we want to use it, we just slide that in place while it's on the tripod and we're good to go. We're going to take this down, flush it up right here to the edge. We split the distance in between the, the two right here. We just have just a little bit of material. We're just going to take it down just to make it look better, you know, because pretty stuff kills. Uh, so. We're just going to use this. You can use a file too, just depending on what kind of stuff you have. This is taking just a little bit longer than normal because I'm running a little bit lighter grit so I don't leave them deep scratches. But if you weren't worried about touching it up or if you had some good cleaner, like brake cleaner or something, you can put WD-40 on this and that aluminum don't clog your pad. Just wet this down, spray a little bit on that, and it cuts like nobody's business. But I didn't want to get the oil everywhere, so. All right, well, we got her down there where we wanted at, and what we're going to do is uh, switch over to a DA. We've got 180 rip paper on it. We're just going to smooth it out. It's going to deburr it and everything also. Black permanent marker. A lot of people probably know, but it, once you put heat to permanent marker, like if you mark a piece of metal and weld next to it, 
this is done. It will not come off. You got to grind it off. So we're going to warm it up, put a little bit on there, and then warm back over it, and uh, should be good to go. Don't have to have a lot of heat. Just just a little bit, and it locks her down. Redneck bluing. Truthfully, this is just you being particular. You don't have to do this. No, know? it just makes it look pretty. And it looks factory. You know, they say chrome don't get you home, but <laughs> this is fancy don't get you dogs either, so. But I like my stuff to look decent, at least for a while. Okay, once you get enough on there, like I said, we'll just warm it up until you see it flash off. And that opens up them pores and it'll never, never come off again. We hope. That is that. So now, that's one finish. Well, we gotta step up the hole. The holes yeah. are set okay. up for, I can't remember what it was. It's a real fine thread that goes in your scope. So we're gonna step them up a little bit bigger than a just to quarter be, inch be and more then secure. we're gonna countersink them for our bigger uh, pan head screws or, or well i don't know if they're yeah i think they're considered pan heads but or whatever they are they got a tapered seat to them all right we got the one we just started on we got everything touched up on it we're getting ready to step the holes up this is a 1764. Just gives me a little bit of slack. It's barely bigger than a quarter inch, and that's what size bolts we're using. So we're gonna drill both these out real quick, and then we'll come back and uh, step it up. What the goal is today, we're gonna get that set up. We're gonna get my 17 Pig Buster machine set up, my HMR, my 22250, and Brandon's Black Betty 22250 set up today. Four guns. That way we can snap them right on top of the dead eye system. We're gonna go hunting tonight. We're gonna to try to coyote hunt. If they're cooperating, we're gonna take some dogs with the new dead eye system. If not, we got big plans to go coon hunting because they were moving like crazy last night. And we wanna try out these night raid lights. So that's the goal. With this aluminum, you wanna go slow so it don't catch. So don't put much pressure down. The other thing I forgot to mention too, drill it from the back side because if you look here on the one we haven't finished out, if you try to drill between these grooves with the bit, it's gonna hang on you. So if you do it from the back side, it's gonna go through nice and smooth, especially if you run it slow. Then when we do our countersink, we're gonna flip it back over. All right, we just got out our half inch countersink. What we're gonna do, it looks pretty close on this half inch to exactly what the head size is. If you can look there, it's, but what you want to do is once you get close to being fully countersunk, start dropping this in a few times, and uh, that way you don't get too much of a countersink on it because you'll start poking through the other side of your uh, rail. So we're just going to get it just where it's nice and flush and won't interfere with anything. Like I said before, slow because it catches out here on this side. And I would call that it right there. If you take the inside edge of your drill bit and use it to scrape the edges, it's a good little trick to deburr the aluminum. Now, we've got both of these drilled and countersunk. They're nice and flush. I'm gonna touch them up with the marker like I did before. Okay, here's your two bolts that are gonna hold this together. They'll fit in these grooves. Now, as you can see, they line up with these grooves here. They go on each side of this bolt. If you wanna center it more and put it up here, um, I mean, some of y'all have all the tools to do this stuff, but once you permanently mount it, you'll have to go through with a cutoff wheel and put your, uh, a groove in this for that. But that's once it's tightened, you do that. And this is stainless, so it won't rust, but that'll let you go center of the mount. But if you don't want to or don't have the tools, you can just scoot it back one notch and uh, it'll go on the rest of them. But it'll just kind of give you that setback. Um, since we do have the tools, we're gonna go ahead and cut a groove in it. Um, but you gotta do it once it's in there and tighten because it'll never tighten back up in the same spot. It'll be close, it won't never be the same. Um, it'll be just a hair off and you'll have to go back in and either file it or uh, cut it again. So 
we're gonna get it fixed and mounted and uh, like I said we're gonna do this wood gun first I'll tell you all the drill bit sizes and everything we use all right what I've done is my old wood workbench I'm gonna drill holes in it and test this before I go doing it on a Boyd stock we're just like everybody else's trial and error with this design it's made to tighten up with a flathead but what happens is when you're done you're supposed to break the sides off that way it can't be backed out it's almost like a tamper proof it should end up like that well while we're trying to tighten it down and make sure we have plenty of bite into this wood stock so it doesn't pull out the screwdriver's going ahead and breaking the sides off um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out by using a quarter 20 with a hex head on it that way it doesn't put pressure on the sides and we'll seed it down until we get to here we'll see how that works but this worked great okay so we're going to back this out and we'll show you what it's going to look like once it's all seated in there and like i said that's that's a half inch depth and it goes right to the bottom of it the 1764 that we drilled out our bracket here we're going to go ahead and lay this in place go through and start our holes with this and then what we came up with on the drill bit size 5 16 is what give us the best bite and still let us be able to thread it in for these uh, inserts here for the wood stock. So we're gonna get this set up. All right, we got a drill bit mounted. Go through your toolbox, find you a deep well socket, depending on what length your drill bit is. You can throw some washers under it to change the depth. But what you've done is we're gonna slip that over. That's the right height for our insert. And our threads don't extend past this with the uh, bolt we're using. So we just need to bottom this out. This is going to keep us from hitting our barrel. Just a little trick. It's a 13 millimeter, uh, three eighths drive. That's going to, we've got that locked in. We're going to drill our holes. We did some measuring. The sticker is pretty well centered and uh, we're going to use it to kind of eyeball it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect if you want to, which I like mine set farther forward. That way it puts me farther away from the tripod, but it's gonna put more pressure on everything. So some people like to put them up here close to the mag, but I like the room to be able to, with my gloves and stuff, just get in here to everything. So the farther you got it forward, the better I think it is. But like I said, it's gonna put more weight down on it. So I'm gonna put it close as I can to this without interfering with it. You know, probably leave myself about the width of my finger. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get one done before I jump back here to the back one. That way I know my distance is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and go as far as I can with this one and jump up to the next size and set my insert and then do my second one. You just want to try to keep it as level as you can. Just kind of keep it eyeballed all the way around. Try to avoid bumping the stock with the socket unless you're not worried about it just get down there as close as you can and go nice and slow all right so we've got our bigger drill bit in there we had to sit a nut underneath of it to get our depth and that puts us just a hair longer because you gotta figure you got to taper the drill bit so you want this to fit flush to the bottom of the hole all right here we go I like to barely put pressure down because you're not going a whole lot bigger. The socket came loose from her tape, so I had to kind of hold it. And I guess that's not a bad idea if you want because it lets it spin. So we got our depth. So we're going to clear a hole out and uh, put one of our inserts in. I don't think Loctite will help this on the wood. It may, but I'm just going to go in dry. <laughs> So just want to get it as close as you can to straight. It'll kind of straighten itself up as it goes, but just keep some nice pressure on it when you first get it started. That way it don't try to splinter the wood. Give it a nice push as you twist it in. That ain't going nowhere. No, that, that dude's in there. Back it out with the bolt. So there's one down. You see that fits nice. Buggered my sticker up a little bit, but I guess if I ever want to put it back, I can put a Savage sticker back over it. Nobody'd ever see it. Okay, so we've got this snug down. 
I'm not going to go too tight because I don't want it to try to rock it. I just want it to be nice and snug where it won't move. And then check, make sure everything looks good to you and that it's straight. doesn't have to be perfect, but I'd like it to be. So we're going to put our smaller bit back in there, put our socket on it, get us a pilot hole started, and then uh, take it back apart and then do the same step we did on the front on the back again. Okay, that's enough for a pilot. Remove this and just repeat all the stuff we did in the first hole. Move it up to the next size drill bit and uh, go from there. When you want to make sure you clean that out real good, make sure there's nothing in the bottom of it. Like I said, once you get it in there, start really eyeballing it and try to get it as straight as you can when you're going down. Y'all might find better techniques than me. I don't know. Uh, this is just the way that we think it works the best. If y'all do find something that works better, please let us know and we'll make sure to add that into a video. That way everybody else can get the same advantage. We're all trying to just help each other out. Try not to go too far, just so it don't tear up the wood, even though it's gonna be covered anyway. Like I said, just a quick bumping. And she should come right out. That looks good to me. Like I said, the sticker's a little buggered, but now we will run some Loctite on these screws because these have a lot of tension on them. I don't see them ever trying to back out unless they rip out and you'd have to probably fall out of the back of your truck with a hook to your tripod before it broke off. So we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these, probably not permanent Loctite, probably do something like a mild Loctite on them. I had to see what I got in the cabinet. But if you run red on them, you definitely ain't never getting it apart unless you warm them up. So we'll get that mounted and then we'll show you all what it looks like on the tripod. We're gonna color these in with that black permanent marker and warm that up. So we'll see y'all in just a minute. We live out in the middle of nowhere. So it's 30, 45 minutes to get to a park store. I don't ever plan on taking this off, so I'm going with the, what I could find in the cabinet, um, which is red permanent. So this is the gel style. They make different kinds. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just put just enough on there. It ain't going to take much. And uh, I think I'm going to turn mine around that direction. If you use the mount we said, it's going to have offset holes. Like I told you all before, I'm going to go through and cut a groove in mine to where they all work once I get this all torqued down. I put it on about halfway around and the depth that the thread is wide or the bolt is wide so that should be plenty all right i'm gonna get the torque wrench out and torque these down i'll let y'all know what we decide on torque what we've come up with is six foot pounds or 72 inch pounds so i'm gonna actually go ahead and just snug these down just a little bit and then we'll torque them um you don't have to torque them i just recommend it that way you know you're not going to break them off and you're not going to strip them out. I'm using a snap-on torque meter for inch pounds. I mean, you don't have to have an expensive one like this. I'm sure some of y'all got some for torquing scopes and stuff down. So this one just goes by just a constant pressure. So we're going to get it up close and call it a day. All right, you can use a style that clicks or whatever you'd like, whichever you feel more comfortable with. This is just the only one I had in inch pounds and I feel like inch pounds are a little more accurate when you're putting that low of a torque on it. I'm gonna take mine up to 75 is what I'm gonna do on my personal. And it won't hurt to come back and check them after you've been shooting it just to make sure because I'm gonna guess that it's gonna sink into this uh, wood a little bit. Um, so I, I would do it before the Loctite locks up. So the best thing to do is set it up, go shoot it, bring it back. Uh, after you put a few rounds through it, did some target practice, and then come back and torque it back while that Loctite's still a little bit wet. You don't want to do it in like a day or so. I think that turned out pretty nice. We've decided, like I was saying earlier in the video, that we want ours to be center. So I'm gonna come through and take 
a uh, cutoff wheel and cut this to where that will fit in there. And what's probably going to happen is it's going to become a flathead screw instead of a uh, Allen. So you may want to sight the gun in with it set back, check your torque specs, then do your cut. It's however y'all want to do it. It's just the way we're doing it. It doesn't mean it's exactly the right way. Um, you can feel free to comment and tell us what you all think about it. And uh, if we think it's better or whatever, uh, we'll put it in the video as an update. All right, so what I got, just a regular cutoff wheel, runs off air. You can put them in electric grinders. You know, they're a lot bigger, like four inch. But that's how I'm gonna do mine. I'm gonna lay something over all this, just avoid sparks on your scope. My scope is butted up against this. Uh, <clears throat> rubber mount so it's not going to take too much I shouldn't make too much of a mess but just in case and we should just be able to work it back and forth nice and slow okay well that looks good and I actually think that it's still got enough in there we've actually fast forwarded uh, we've actually this has been sitting and shot for a day Loctite's dry, so we know we'll never have to torque it again. We've already double checked it before we cut our groove. Um, like I said, all we've all we've used is this cutoff wheel and just kind of slowly worked it back and forth until you kind of barely touch. You can see I barely touched the uh, black there and went nice and level in the width of the rail. Just test fit it a couple times, and you can also come back and clean it up with a small file if you'd like to. But just make sure you kind of blow all your stuff off before you uh, flip the gun over. Make sure there's no metal shavings or anything. But we're going to go ahead and put this back on here and uh, show you all what it looks like mounted on the tripod. Okay, so here's the Predator Tactics mount. It comes with the tripod. Um, we're going to go ahead and mount it. From what I can tell, it's, I guess you'd call it symmetrical, asymmetrical. It's the same both ways. There's no wrong way to put it just whichever side you want to be torquing your bolts down on so whatever design you want facing forward yeah which i'm going to put mine with them in the crosshair so I, that's what i'm looking at anyway <laughs> it's got c clips on it in the back side keep you from going too far and you don't want to force it because you'll knock them c clips off there now make sure it's all the way seated down on there and then we're going to come back and uh snug her down here like i said before don't go too it's it's a little bit hard to get on there it's not ridiculously hard but make sure you're lined up in your grooves and don't go too far because as you can see it's got these little i said c clips but they're actually an e-clip and they uh they're locked on the threads keep you from backing it out too far and losing the nut I'm not for sure what the torque specs are supposed to be on these, so I'll probably just look it up and we'll put it in the uh, video with uh, all the proper tools that you're going to need to do it. All right, we've looked it up. The best of our knowledge looks like what's going to work the best is going to be 20 inch pounds. And I like overdoing stuff, so I'm going 25 on mine. And like I said before, this is just our suggestion. Do it how you want. Just hope your gun don't fall off. Always come back and double check everything after you hunt, you know, because things can come loose, scopes, everything. So always check your stuff. We're gonna get this thing uh, put back together. Now we're on our second gun. Okay, what we have here is a Savage 17 uh, HMR. This is a composite stock, it's not wood. So what we think, is going to work better on this is an actual helicoil and a quarter 20 same as we used on the other setup except we're using helicoil instead of a, a brass insert so this one here will be the same drill bit size the 1764s that we used to drill the holes through here before we counter sunk them so we've got this one lined up we're going to drill our first hole do it the same way lock it down move back to our back one and uh, this if you buy a helicoil kit it's going to come with the correct uh, tap and on the back side of your helicoil kit it's going to give you your drill bit sizes 
we're using the 1764s because we've already got it out. We've already drilled all our holes with it. The factory stock on it is thinner than I really like. Um, my rule of thumb has always been you want your threads as deep as the bolt is wide. This one here, we've only actually got about three threads going into it, but we've Loctited it in and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just give it a shot. I think it's gonna hold fine, but if you wanted some more assurance, if you run into this problem, you can pull the stock up off of it and actually run a, there's plenty of room between the barrel and the stock and run a, um, a nylon nut, I mean, so it doesn't ever back off and actually torque it the plate onto it that way um, we may do that in a future video we're going to see how this holds up that way we can show you all if it does come loose or pulls or whatever and uh, we'll let you know how it works out so we're going to go ahead and get this plate mounted on it and uh, we're almost ready to go out and hunt on this gun since we're doing everything a little bit different with the helicoils coils and everything instead of grooving this we're working it off the back um, like i showed you in that first video i grooved the first one, I'll go ahead and take it back off here and show you guys. We're gonna run it off these two grooves. Instead of, I used this one and this one, we're just going one notch back. Just to kind of show y'all how it holds up. But we'll go ahead and get these torqued. Use red Loctite on the helicoil and on the bolts going into the helicoils. This is the new Predator Tactics Deadeye system with the ball head. And a few features that we really like is it does have a compass up here. It's real small, but you can still see it. It levels here and levels here on the ball. It's got a brake here and an adjuster here for your height. So once you get your legs set, you wanna give yourself enough to where if you're on uneven ground, like if the ground's in front of you is a little higher or a little lower, you be able to fine tune it with this. So I always set mine when it's bottomed out, just a little bit lower than I really need. That way when I'm out in the field, I can scoot this up. You don't wanna be at the end of it, you can, worst case, but the farther you get it up, the more unstable you're going to be. So we always like to keep it no more than probably about four or five inches out, but that's more than you'll ever need to probably fine tune it. And uh, it's pretty easy. Like I said, if it, if for some reason you can flip these top legs and slide it down pretty quickly in the field, you know, to change however you want it. So a lot of people think too, that you got to tighten these things to the moon. You just want them snug enough to where it takes out all the slop and you still want it to be able to rotate. I like to set it up to where everything's just snug enough where I can just move it, but not too much. And right before I go to take a shot, once I know I'm there, if I have time, I'll go ahead and give it a little snug on there to where that won't move. That way when you kick, it'll also take the shake out of you. So I'll leave it just to where I can move and rotate. This one down here, I'll keep it snug enough to where it doesn't unscrew itself, but it's still hard to turn to where it's got a little drag. So that's how I like mine. Everybody else might be a little different. Um, so what we're gonna do, it's got a groove here. I'm gonna line it up with me, tip it back, and go ahead and set the brake up a little bit. And you gotta make sure you get this all the way back out. It does have a stop on this point. So you wanna lock it in one side and it'll kind of set itself in there. Once you do it a few times, you'll get better. And then once you raise it up, check and make sure you're, you're nice and square on everything and uh, start snugging it up. Okay, there we go. It's all the way down. So snug that up. You don't have to over tighten it because it can't go nowhere because it's in the grooves so you want to always when you let it down to this point you always want to be inside that groove but as you can see that's a little bit high for me it's about about right so i'll set my brake that way when i'm scanning and another thing i like too is when it's freezing cold i'll take tuck this up in here like this and just stand here with my hands on you know one hand on a call or whatnot um, down here at the bottom we sometimes hang our collar there because you can flip it up on its cord and hold it right here and let it go uh, you can use it for whatever you want hanging your kill you know for a picture whatever you'd like but we really like it um, 
we switched everything up from uh, the slick setup and uh, we think this is better in our opinion um, let's try it out I mean it's 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 an awesome setup so that's what all of our teams running now is the predator tactics dead eye and it's been a killer setup so we've got it all set up on here tonight we're going after some fox we don't want to destroy them so we got the uh, 17 WSM uh, with a SIG whiskey 412 by 50 and this is the uh, version with the fluted barrel on the 17 and it comes with a void stock and uh, it is a tack driver and what goes really well with this gun since we're not going to be shooting 500 yards is just a little night raid <clears throat> It's a fixed beam. It doesn't tighten up or, or flood, but it's perfect. It, you can't go wrong with it. Um, we found too that the mount that comes with it, you don't need the windage and elevation mount because of the amount of flood that this has. Uh, this all works perfect. And uh, that's, that's the way we've set it up. And it's, it's been a real good light paired with this gun. We like to scoot ours out best we can. So that's what we're going after tonight's Fox and that little setup there. Now, if somebody was to go out and order this from Predator Tactics, where do they get this bracket? It comes with this. This is the one that comes with it. There is an option on there. Uh, you can get, it's a windage and elevation mount. Sits it up about eh, maybe a little bit higher than that, but what it gives you is the option to dial it left to right, up and down. They're available for all the lights now, I think. Um, I know the XXL they didn't have for a minute, but they do now. So, but I, I don't think you need it on this, but it's personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I've got it on my other lights because when you crank them out three, 400 yards, um, you want to be able to really dial it down. But inside 200, we're good. So that's our setup for tonight. This is the uh, windage and elevation mount. This is for the... Uh, standard reaper but just to give you all an idea of what we was talking about on the pt uh windage and elevation mounts this dials in the up and down this gives you your side to side all right what we have here is everything we use uh, we have a 1764 drill bit and a 5 16 and then we used a battery sawzall you can use a hand sawzall or whatever you think works the best to cut that um, this is our deep well socket you'll just have to find you one that fits good and then we have the nut down here we use as a spacer we use a black sharpie to touch up this is what we're going to be using on our plastic stock we're going to do it the exact same way we did here on the wood except for we're going to use a helicoil and we got these at a local parts store comes with the tool and everything they're about 20 bucks um, we have our inch pounds uh, torque wrench um, then we have a three millimeter and a four millimeter allen wrench the Predator Tactics uh, stuff comes with Allen wrenches, but uh, the stuff that we bought from the hardware store, I think was a little bit bigger. It was maybe the four millimeter, but that's the stainless screw that we used. And that was a uh, half inch long. And then uh, we used a quarter 20 to set the inserts. And these are just the, uh, like a brass insert. Uh, always wanna wear safety glasses. I mess up sometimes just like everybody else and forget to put them on. Um, and that's just a little pocket torch that I warmed up that uh, lock or uh, permanent marker with. That'll keep it from ever coming off. Then that's my little angle grinder that I smoothed it down with. You can use a file. Same way with this. I cut the groove back in that uh, with this for my bolt. You don't have to even put a groove in it, but you'll just be one notch forward. Um, you can do that with a file too. It'll just take you a while. And then I smoothed my edges with a DA. You can hand sand it or leave filed. So. That was 180 grit paper we used on that. But you can simplify it and you can make it look as good or bad as you want. It's probably still gonna work. So um, that's that. Thank y'all.